All right, good morning, everybody. Let's begin worship together at the font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to God's service and penitence and faith, let us renew our confidence and trust in God's mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Dear beloved, hear the good news. The God of love and power forgives you, frees you from your sins, heals and strengthens you by the Holy Spirit, and raises you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank 
Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. As some of you know, this summer, we're just taking a couple minutes toward the beginning of worship. We're reading a page from this children's book called Sunday Morning by Gail Ramshaw. This week, we're up to the readings, so we're making progress here. It says, we hear of God's care for the Hebrew people. We listen to a reading from the Hebrew Bible. The people of Israel gathered at a mountain called Sinai. Moses delivered to them stone tablets with God's commands written on them. We are glad that God speaks to us in our world. And if you look, it's too small to see, but there's a picture of Moses on Mount Sinai with the, uh, with the Ten Commandments coming down. So there was this guy, I think he's interesting. This guy was alive in the year 150 or so. This was before we had the Bible. It was just a bunch of texts that were floating around. People were putting them together in different ways. And Marcion said, I have this great Bible. Everyone should use my Bible. His Bible had like 10 epistles from St. Paul, a bunch of which St. Paul didn't write. It had only one gospel in it. He just had St. Luke's gospel. And then it had no Old Testament. It was just Luke and Paul. 
And his idea was that in the Old Testament, God is all about rules and wrath. And then in the New Testament, God is all about love. And so Christians, we have nothing to learn from the Old Testament at all, so we can just cut it out of the book. That's obviously not what we did, because what the church said is that there's a continuity of God's character in the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. So it isn't like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or something. God is always consistently offering us grace and mercy. So every week in worship, your Hebrew Bible reading and your gospel reading, your New Testament reading, those are all connected. There's a theme that draws them together. So today, I'm going to give you something to pay attention for. You have Zechariah is your Hebrew Bible reading, and you have Matthew's gospel text. See if you can find what is the bridge that draw those two things together. How is God acting in Matthew's text the same way God acts in Zechariah's text? You can write it on a communion card. It'll be graded at the end uh, as a joke. But I think we're, we're ready for the, for the Hebrew Bible reading, Bill. Okay, here's one end of the bridge. The first reading is from Zechariah, the ninth chapter, beginning at the ninth, ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer that I do it. It is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me, for I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God and my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind 
making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. Then the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's gospel reading is of a certain type. Jesus makes a very profound point about the nature of discipleship and then illustrates it using a piece of agricultural equipment that unless you grew up on a farm or you're a 90s kid who grew up on Oregon Trail, few of us think about it a whole lot. And in today's case, it's all about the yoke. The yoke may be unusual to many of us 21st century suburbanites, but it was a common point of reference in Jesus' world. It's an image that's used frequently in the Bible, about 60 or 70 times altogether. Sometimes the scriptures talk about yokes as negative things. In Jeremiah, the prophet makes a yoke and wears it as a sign of God's judgment on the people. But a yoke could also be a good thing. In the apocryphal Sirach, the yoke is an image of adherence to God's law. In both cases, the yoke is about what orders your life. What are the values, the priorities, the realities and aspirations that shape your day-to-day existence in the world? And if the yoke is all about what gives your life definition and meaning, then everyone has a yoke. You don't get to choose whether you have one or not. You just get to choose what you're going to be yoked to. As Bob Dylan once put it, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Or as St. Matthew might croon, you're going to have to wear somebody's yoke. So we might begin by asking, what are some of the yokes that we take on? What are some of the interests that we end up serving, the goals and aspirations that define our lives? There's an infinite number. Let's just pick three easy ones. One obvious one would be wealth. And making the ultimate goal or value in your life, just racking up however much money you can make and viewing everything in terms of whether it's good or bad for your wallet. Or another yoke could be social status. Instead of asking whether a decision will be good for us and our neighbors, we ask, will this make my life look more or less desirable to other people around me? 
What are people going to say about me when I do this? Or a third yoke could be a sense of exceptionalism that makes us different from other people, that we are unique and we're exempt from the perils of living. Now, part of the appeal of those yokes is how light they seem when you first put them on. They start off easy. You get more money in your bank account and you get that little shot of dopamine in your brain. You impress your neighbors, you get that nice ego boost. You get a stroke of good luck and you think, well, of course I deserve that. I'm a good person after all. But over time, the yokes that started to feel so light get a little bit heavier because you have to keep putting them on over and over and over again. If wealth is your yoke, there will always be someone who has more than you. If social status is your yoke, you'll end up afraid of your neighbors and what they might say when you're not in the room with them. If exceptionalism is your yoke, you'll interpret any disappointment and struggle in your life as a sign of personal failure. Regardless of the choice, the result will be the same. The yoke that started to feel light will begin to feel heavier and heavier as time goes on. In the fourth century, the desert father, John the Dwarf, put it this way. He said, we've put the light burden to one side and loaded ourselves with a heavy one. That is to say, self-justification. We choose the heavy burdens because they seem light. The yoke that promises life and happiness turns out to be heavier than we thought, and to put it down feels like failure. It means giving up, giving in, admitting defeat. We can't be as successful as other people. We can't keep up with the Joneses. We're more like other people than we'd like to admit. Putting that yoke down is a kind of small death in our lives. Which is exactly why we need to hear the invitation that Jesus gives us to take on his yoke. And at first glance, this appears to be a bad trade. The yoke that Jesus offers us is an intimidating one. To take on this yoke means signing up to love without condition, pray for your enemies, and if you can do those first two, you need to be perfect the way God is perfect. It's a yoke that seems to have impossibly high standards for us to meet, a yoke that's only setting us up for failure to drag us down even further. But Jesus' yoke is different from all the other yokes that we put on. And this is why it's different. This is the most important part of the homily. It's the only kind of yoke that we can put down without becoming a failure. It's the only yoke that says right up front, you are not going to meet the standard. You will try to love without condition and pray for your enemies and be as perfect as God. And guess what? You will not. And that's okay. Because even when the yoke falls off, you can always take it back up again and start anew. Unlike the old yokes that seem light but turn out to be really heavy, Jesus offers us a yoke that seems impossible but turns out to be life-giving. His burden is light because it saves us from having to keep up appearances for others or reassure ourselves of our own value. We may be unsure what others think of us, and we may feel like strangers to ourselves, but we know exactly what God thinks about us. And we know that because of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus says there's one group of people who really get this. They take on his yoke eagerly and joyfully. And who is it? It's not people who dress like this. It's not people who are in church every Sunday, people who are well-read, people who are smart. Who is it? It's kids, younger kids in particular, because they haven't tried to define their sense of self by taking on any of the world's yokes on offer. Their wealth. They don't try to make their self dependent on other people's opinions of them. They don't see themselves as different from other people. Instead of trying to justify themselves in their lives, they just receive life as a gift. The people who carry Jesus' yoke are often people who don't even realize they're doing it. Now, for us who are not kids, having our lives shaped by Jesus' yoke is a long way off from our default setting. The old yokes we've left behind may have left quite a mark on us, and God knows literally that we're bound to drop this new yoke pretty quick. 
And yet Jesus invites us anyway and promises us grace along the way, helping us to unlearn all those coping mechanisms we use to bear our heavy burdens and inviting us to walk with him in newness of life. Take my yoke upon you, Jesus says, and come and learn from me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together with the church around and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite the assembly to sit or kneel for the reading of today's prayers. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, wildlife sanctuaries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, province, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. We pray especially this week for the people of Eritrea and Ethiopia. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, <clears throat> and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need and make your presence known among all who suffer. If you have any additional petitions, I invite you to offer those out loud or in your hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around the word and sacrament, encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. God, in your mercy, with thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Keep us in communion with all the saints until we at last find our rest in you. God, in your mercy, receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The whole Lord be he with you. Lift up your hearts. 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 Lift up your hearts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the heart. Yes. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the heart. Yes. Holy God, mighty and tender, your mercy endures forever. By your promise, you bound yourself to the earth and its creatures, granting them life and calling them to flourish, setting the sign of your bow in the clouds, the colors of your love and faithfulness. By your promise, you bound yourself to your people of old, calling them to be a blessing to others, showing them steadfast love in every generation and calling them to be a light to the nations. By your promise, you joined us to Jesus, your beloved, grafting us into your living vine, calling us to bear the fruit of your self-giving love. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Spirit on us in these gifts of bread and wine. Make us a sign of your faithfulness. Send us to serve the earth with mercy and love. With all the saints in light, the earth and its creatures, with sun and moon and all stars, we praise you, O God, through Christ Jesus, in your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the pillar, gracious. Yeah. And healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentlemen and peace that all of the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Does anyone have any announcements, any joys, concerns? Yes, we have uh, coffee. I saw Beth Aquino brought, were they muffins or cookies? Yes, blueberry. Oh, blueberry. All right. Well, I might skip the blessing and beat you all to the uh, muffins. Um, just a couple notes here. Godly play, we're going to hang out in the kids' area after service. Uh, Lorraine Frymouth was discharged from the hospital. She's currently at Christian Health in rehab. She's making progress, the family said. So that's, that's good news for Lorraine. And then finally, today's the first day of summer camp at Crossroads, which is exciting. So please keep Anthony and all the staff in your prayers as they begin summer camp. That's all I have. So I invite you to receive the blessing. May you share the mind of Christ. May your life declare God's praise. May you find joy in your life's work. May you love in deed and truth. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. It's okay. You did good. You did good. Go in peace, care for the vulnerable. Thanks be to God.